locally owned and operated by KRTY Limited. KRTY Los Gatos, San Jose. It's time for the KRTY on-air music meeting. Julie and Nate with the songs you love or hate. We're going to play some new music here, and this is a chance for you to help us decide which song should be on the radio. Now here's KRTY program director Julie Stevens and general manager Nate Deaton. This is the on-air music meeting, and this is the music meeting you don't want to miss. We are featuring the brand new Ashley McBride album, Never Will, and I cannot tell you how... How many great songs are on this? I mean, I can't even begin to express how excited I am about this album. I heard it at Country Radio Seminar when she did some of the different cuts off of there, and I was so excited about it coming out. It came out on Friday, and we want you to go buy it because if you're trapped on a desert island, like you are right now, you are going to want the best music, and this is the best music. So you know how we do this. I pick one, Nate picks one, the artist picks one, and the label picks one. We're going to start right here with the label's pick, and I think they picked a really good one because I think this is the story of Ashley McBride. So we're going to go in there with Hang In There Girl.
She received two 2020 Grammy nominations for Best Country Song and Best Country Solo Performance. ACM nomination for Song of the Year for Girl Going Nowhere. She's out with her second album. It is Ashley McBride. The name of the album is Never Will. And do you think, Ashley, thank you for being with us, that the label picked that song because it so tells your story? I do. And I also think that, um, you know, when we wrote the song, it was specifically for young men and women um, that think the world is tiny and that it's always going to shrink around them. And and just to hang in there, because when you get a little bit older, the world gets a little bit bigger and you have more control. But I think they chose it because right now we all need to be told to hang in there because it gets gets a little hard to be by yourself and to be isolated. And um, and we have to hang in there alone, but at the same time. What does having to shelter at home, what does that do to a songwriter? It really, it kind of dries up your possibilities, doesn't it? It does. I was really thinking this would be a super creative time for me. Um, And I'm I'm finding myself, I mean, I'm playing guitar a lot, but I'm not getting a lot of ideas. And part of the reason I'm not getting a lot of ideas is because I'm watching a lot of television. I'm not reading a lot of books, you know, and what you put in there is is what you're going to get out. But really, song ideas come from human interaction, and there just isn't any of it right now. So I think that, I mean, Julie said this in the intro, but I'll, I'll come back to it here for a minute. We saw you play... I don't remember. It was six, maybe seven songs because there was a really tall guy in front of me in that suite. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody at, could see around. At CRS that I could not, <laughs> for the life of me, get to move. But it was, it was kind of distracting. But anyway, um, I think this song, is. it also kicks off the album. I think it's so perfect to kick off the whole feel of this album. And I'm assuming that you did that on purpose. Yeah, I think this was the best choice for the beginning of the record because it's going to kind of set the tone. And the first thing we're going to put out there is hope and perseverance. And anytime you can put that message out into the universe, uh, it's beneficial. Okay, the next song we're going to go to is Nate's pick off this album. Oh, Nate and I had a fist fight. We did. I mean, we fought <laughs> over the songs that we were going to get to. Um, this song just, this song makes me cry. So we're going to play this song, and then we're going to come back and talk to Ashley McBride about why this song makes me cry. This off the album, um, Never Will, Ashley McBride's Sparrow. Telephones and postcards I called you from the lobby bar on Tuesday How's the okra coming up? And boy, I wish I had me some Save me a plate Get a couple days in July Kiss Dad for me I love you both Good night Sparrow Oh, you wouldn't trade nothing For the way it feels to fly It ain't fair though How you miss the ground When you're out here in the sky Higher than you ever
Okay, Ashley McBride, tell me why that song always makes me cry. It makes me cry, too. It, oh. Singing it, 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 I get chills. And I mean, and I wrote the dang thing, so it, <laughs> I get chills singing it, right? It, which was, That's one of those times that it lets you know that sometimes when a song is written, um, it's not just the people that are writing it. There's something else in the room. There's the, the, that little part of the ether that gets to seep into that song. And it's about missing your loved ones. And it, if, whether you're a long-haul truck driver or if you're um, one of our armed um, servicemen and women, or maybe you're in sales and you travel a lot, um, you might be a travel nurse or you might be a musician. And, and when you're doing this thing that you want to do and succeed at, Uh, and you love it, and your family really wants you to succeed and love it, and they also miss you terribly. Uh, And so you may find yourself, like I did, in an airplane going, wow, about this time my mom is telling my stepdad to get out of his chair (laughs) and go and get in the bed, and and I'm I'm missing that part of my life. And right now it's important because, you know, when you're talking about missing your loved ones, we're, we're all missing each other right now. Right, for sure. And yeah, I think that's where it, I just can't help but tear up when she's waking him up and locking the door and they're going, oh, because everybody, if you had a stable home life, that's what everybody's parents is doing about that time, right? Right, right. Oh. And, and the band moms, um, I haven't got to tell very many people this, but the moms of each band member, we call them the mom tribe. And even though they live, you know, states apart, all of them live so far apart, they pray for us collectively every morning. Oh. Uh, and, and so saying a prayer, I mean, literally, for this crazy group of kids that wants to, to do this for a living. And that, like, even that, say, just saying that right now tear, tears me oh, up. Me too. It, it, oh, I love that song so much. I'm so glad I got to be a part of, of creating that song. And it, and it came from um, two of the tattoos on my arms uh, are sparrows. And they were the first ones on my arms. My arms were completely blank until the two sparrows got there and one's facing home and one's facing away. And Nicolette asked oh. why they were that way. And I said, because one is always leaving. One's always thinking about leaving and one's always thinking about coming home. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. I just, that and, is and, just and, awesome. and I think, and we, we talked about this before, but I want to say it again. I think one of the things that, that makes this album so unique and really what you do so unique besides you is, is you, the people that you write with are not what you would consider your uh, mainstream Nashville writers. And I think that's why the songs are always so special. Thank you. It was really important to me on this record to keep writing um, with what we would call the freaks and weirdos. Um, <laughs> it, it, right? And, it, and I, Brandy Clark might be offended if I call her a freak and a weirdo. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> she may take that. Um, she may take that as a compliment. I know Shane McAnally certainly um, has had a, a ton of success, and he's got you know the the first single with me and Nicolette on this record. Um, but I, it, you know, the people that I wrote "Girl Going Nowhere" with, the people that I wrote "El Dorado" with, and "Tired of Being Happy" with, those needed to be the same people. Um, though, that, because we do, we don't want anything to be manufactured. We just, things have to happen organically. So the writers I already had a relationship with got to be the writers for this record it's just wow. awesome and, and i think you know this but we featured the brandy um album uh, uh, about a month ago on the same show and and she's just spectacular and that's again i knew i knew that about sparrow which is one of the reasons that i picked it so um the next single off of this album is the title track and if if hang in there girl is who you used to be then i think never will is who you are now and this is your pick so we're going to go play never will and come back and talk about that
Never will. Ashley McBride, that is the name of the new album that we are featuring today on the On Air Music Meeting. I'm Julie Stevens, the program director. Our general manager, Nate Deaton, is here, and and Ashley McBride herself is here. And so you need to talk about Never Will. Did I nail it? Is that who you are now? You did. You nailed it. Um, we didn't mean to write a sequel to the song Girl Going Nowhere, but it just kind of happened. And, you know, coming from the Girl Going Nowhere perspective, this is when I'm still really, really um, raw and really, really hurt that, that there were all these naysayers. And here we are years later, and this, the girl going nowhere grows up into a woman who's not afraid to put her fist in the air uh, and choose any particular finger uh, to put up. <laughs> and um, it, was, it, was really, it was also a song that wound up being written by everybody in the band. Uh, everybody wound up being a writer on this song, which is super, wow. super cool and really rare. Um, yes, it, it it is very defiant, and uh, I'm I'm really proud of it. I knew when we put it on the record that that would likely become the title of the record. We didn't know. We we always toy with what could be the title, um, but they, it, we kept going back to Never Will. Wow, I I just think it's a brilliant song, and I went whoa. That is who she is right now. Hang in there, girl. Maybe who she used to be, but that is who she is right now. And good for you. Um, I think, you know, with all the talk about nobody plays females and blah, blah, blah. No, we just needed some females who knew how to write and sing songs. And by golly, we got one right here. Well, thank you. Thank you. We do these album previews when the album comes out, but don't forget that the big old hit One Night Standards is also on this album. And that's the thing. This album is is full of songs that you need to hear start to finish. So go buy it. Don't buy one or the other. Go buy the whole dang whole thing, thing and play yes. it start to finish. Yeah, I, I, I think um, you're going to have trouble deciding which songs are going to be singles off this album. I think that's going to be the biggest um, uh, harangue you're going to have over this. Have you found that yet? Yes. Um, everybody, you know, of course, everybody has their opinion on what should be the next single. And if you're basing it off um, fan reaction when we're doing them live, you're going to have an even harder time deciding yeah. what these singles should be. Because at the beginning of Martha Divine, when you've got that yes. something, and then people will go, yeah, as soon as they hear Quinn play that riff, like, okay, well, that, that should be a single. But then you have Matt's yep. first thing I reach for, and you go, okay, that should be a single. Right. I do think it's going to be really hard, and that's such a nice place to be. It's such a nice um, problem to have. And that's what I love about um, the first thing I reach for is, it. holy cow, is that a country song? Oh, Man, I mean, any country artist in any decade of music, of country music, could have done that song. It is such a country song. So it really shows your range. So I agree. It's going to be really hard not to pick that one. The one that probably won't be a single but will be a fan favorite is our next one yes, and final exactly. one. <laughs> okay, this is my pick off the album. Um, Nate wanted it. I stole it. So here we go. This is Styrofoam. A physicist named Ray McIntyre rediscovered a method first discovered by Carl Munters, an inventor from Sweden. You knew that, right? Yeah, I looked it up. Anyway, old Ray found a way to make large quantities of extrudent polystyrene in a closed cell foam form that was resistant to moisture. But you and I know it as Thank you. 
flower pots, get it in peanut form, and fill up a box so that the crappy ashtray that your kid made in class to send to grandpappy don't get cracked along the way. Hey, it's also used to make wraps for the U.S. military. I'm for anything that supports the U.S. military. Thousands of usages, all kinds of stuff. And that includes 44-ounce cups. Mother Nature. It decomposes so slow. I'm no scientist. All I know is this beer I'm drinking is so cold. Thanks to And thanks, Steve. Steve! The guy at the quick sack. We have been featuring on the on-air music meeting the brand new album from Ashley McBride that you must, you must go get. It's called Never Will, and every song on that album is a winner, every single one. There are no fillers on this album. We could only do four for you here. Um, you have to talk about Styrofoam. How in the world did you come to write that? <laughs> I didn't write Styrofoam. Um, so I... I wrote uh, a lot of a lot of record one with um, a gentleman named Randall Clay, who was a, a I would consider him a brother, and he passed away about a year ago, October, and so and that was a really devastating loss. We knew on record two we wanted to keep as many songs as we could, as what whatever whatever would fit and make sense. We want to keep Randall alive in this way and honor him in that way. We get all the way done with recording the record, and Jay says, "Man, I wish we had one more that was just like really fun to sing along to," <laughs> and I said okay, well, I'm going to play you this song that Randall wrote about styrofoam. And he just kind of looked at me and was like, I know, I know that's a ridiculous title, but just wait. Because <laughs> in 1941, a physicist named Ray McIntyre, he discovered a method. <laughs> I play it. And it's ridiculous, of course. Um, but it's, it's so, it, it, it has this thing, okay? It's, it's educational. It's it is <laughs> educational. Right? It, it, it melodically is fun to sing and sing along to. And it's intelligently written. <laughs> finding all of those things in one country song is very rare. And to find those things in a country song that's about freaking styrofoam <laughs> right, is, is a complete unicorn. Randall Clay was an absolute genius. And so when we got to put that on the record, it made my heart so happy. And when you listen through the whole record, front to back, and you get to Never Will, and you're driving just a little bit too fast and you can feel that energy, styrofoam is the equivalent of having a very serious conversation with somebody and then at the very end, they reach up and touch your nose and go, boop. <laughs> it's just a nice little thing at the end that, that reminds you that this side of country music exists, too, and we can do it. Oh, I, so I, have to, I have to tell the story real quick. I know we're, we're almost out of time, but I have to tell the story real quick. So the day at, at, at CRS, after we saw you in the suite the night before, we do an annual thing where, the, where Espo and the head of the company and the A&R people play us songs. Well, Espo has, who's the head of Warner Brothers, has instituted a green policy in the building. And Chris Lacey, who's the head of A&R or, on this record, said that they even took all the utensils away. So they were playing us these songs, and Espo got up to take a call, and she goes, oh, good, he's gone. We can play you one. We really want to play you. <laughs> <laughs> It's so great. Thank you so much, Ashley, for taking the time. I am so excited about this album, and it's just you. Yes, you are flying just like that sparrow. So congratulations. Thank you so much. And you've been on my side from the get-go, and I really cannot thank you enough for just being um, a champion for us. 